Good morning, guys. I hope you're all having a lovely morning. I was thinking about a conversation I was having the other day with one of my coworkers. He told me that he waits until the last minute, jumps out of bed, and makes his way to the office. I told him we couldn't be more opposite. In fact, my cortisol levels are spiking just thinking about it. I'm somebody who loves a slow morning. I love having a block of time to do what I want to do on my own terms. By getting up early, I feel like I'm already ahead of the curve. I feel like I have peace and quiet to focus on what I want before the day even gets started. Waking up early gives me more time to work on my goals as opposed to catching up on them at night. This doesn't mean that I don't value sleep. In fact, having a good sleep schedule gives me the time to do the things I want to do in the morning. I think you have to be methodical and thoughtful when it comes to time. If we want to allocate our time to, say, a slower morning, you have to put a greater emphasis on how you use your time the night before. In the book, Atomic Habits, James Clear talks about the value of creating identity-based habits. For me, instead of taking a bus to the metro, I use that time to get a good 10-minute walk-in. That's 20 minutes a day. Also, instead of scrolling on my phone, I use this opportunity to read. I usually get to the office around 9.20. I'll wash my hands, unpack my bag, and make myself an oat milk latte. I find it hard eating first thing in the morning, so I always eat breakfast when I get to the office. I try my best to prepare my breakfast the night before, so I don't waste time and energy deciding what I'm going to eat. For breakfast today, I prepared yogurt with strawberries with granola and flax seeds. For lunch today, I'm having Asian chicken meatballs with basmati rice and bok choy. I love this recipe for an easy weeknight meal. It's so easy to make, it's gluten-free, and it tastes just as good the following day, or you could freeze it. I also make sure to always have rice prepared in my fridge. Being gluten-free, it's a staple in my diet. I'm not somebody who likes meal prepping, but I like the idea of making once to eat twice. some self-care time, it's time to make dinner. Tonight, I'm making one of my favorite weeknight meals, Thai green curry. Tonight, I'm making it with frozen shrimp, but I sometimes make it with chicken or tofu. All you need to do is cut up some veggies. I like peppers, zucchini, and bok choy. I think bok choy has seriously become my new favorite vegetable. I am a huge fan of these kits. 
It comes with the curry paste, coconut milk, and all the herbs and spices. Once I'm done eating, I'll store all my leftovers in the fridge and clean the kitchen. I used to be lazy and sometimes wait until the following day to clean up, but I really believe now the connection between a clean space and a clear mind. I really think it's true that a clean environment fosters a sense of calm, whereas a messy environment leads to feelings of stress and anxiety. In the book Atomic Habits, James Clear refers to this as resetting the room. Basically, when you leave the room, you reset it for the next time you'll be walking in. So essentially, I'll wash the dishes and clean up my space after I cook, so I don't have to do it when I'm winding down for the night. I was saying earlier that I think you have to be methodical and thoughtful when it comes to time. If we want to allocate our time to a slow morning, you have to put a greater emphasis on how you use your time the night before. This is where I believe habit stacking is vital. Before I get into bed, I'll fill the kettle with water, so all I have to do in the morning is turn it on. I'll fill up my water bottle with water and I'll prepare my workout clothes. I've started doing gua sha as part of my nighttime wind down routine. I find the ritual calming and almost therapeutic at night. I also find that it helps relieve any stress or tension that I've been holding on to throughout the day. While I'm going through the ritual, I'll either read or watch something on TV. I think when it comes to time, you need to decide what you really want and get laser focused. On my vision board, I posted a quote that said, it's not about the money I'm after, it's the freedom. It's to live life on your own terms. When I think about freedom, I think about time. In my opinion, time is one of our most valuable assets. In my last video, I talked about how the pandemic gave us the gift of time. Prior to that, most of us prioritized the hustle of the work life while sacrificing our well-being, time, our sleep, our stress, because we had no work-life balance. It's important to start building habits that are aligned with the type of person you want to be. I believe you can be productive without sacrificing your well-being. My non-negotiables center around my health and wellness time with my family and friends, and building my work and goals around that, which has made me a much happier person. <laughs>